Hello everyone, this is Rohan and in this video I'm going to discuss about foundation plan. Now I have already made a video about shallow foundations where I have given the types of shallow foundations as well as the typical dimensions for shallow foundation. So it would be beneficial for you if you first see that video and then move on to see this video. I'm pasting the link of that video in the description below. I hope you all watch it. Alright, now let's start discussing about foundation plan. Now what is a foundation plan? A foundation plan is a scaled drawing of a proposed building development. So a foundation plan is basically going to show you the position and the sizes of the foundation at the, uh, I mean below the ground level. Okay, now uh, please understand that I am going to concentrate about RCC framed structure buildings only in this video and I'm not going to talk about the foundation for the load bearing structures okay because that is what we commonly use this this that is RCC framed structure now the scale of the foundation is usually 1 is to 100 or whatever is the scale chosen for the floor plans so for our case it is usually 1 is to 100 now prerequisites for drawing a foundation plan that means what you need to have beforehand before starting the foundation plan is you need the position of the columns at the ground level as well as the sizes of the columns at the ground level that means the center to center distance between each column should be known to you as well as the sizes of the columns that means whether it is 200 mm by 200 mm or 300 mm by 300 mm or 200 by 300 mm whatever may be the case all these has to be known to you. So now let's see what all things a typical foundation plan consists of. Number one is the position of the column at the ground level as I already told you. Second is the horizontal distance between each column. Third is the vertical distance between each column. This is the first three things that we have to mark to start with the foundation plan. Number four is the foundation provided for each column. Now that may be a, a sloped footing, it may be a combined footing, whatever it may be. So that foundation for each of the column needs to be shown along with the naming. We have to name these footings. And finally, we have to provide the diagonal checks. Now I think the first four is quite uh, easy to understand for you. Let's discuss in detail what the diagonal check is. Now diagonal check is usually done by taking three uh, footings at a time. Uh, so when you have three footings at a time you already know the horizontal and vertical distance between them and three footings at a time will obviously form a triangle. So you can find the distance of the diagonal of the uh, you know uh, diagonal of the two footings so uh, how do you find the diagonal you find it out by using the uh, 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 by using the Pythagoras theorem that is hypotenuse square equals to base square into perpendicular square okay so uh, what happens is when practically when you are setting out a foundation you usually do it by measuring the horizontal distance and the vertical distance only but if you have a diagonal distance also you can cross check which will improve the uh, accuracy of setting out the foundation now uh, let us move on to uh, see step by step that how our foundation is drawn right so here for the foundation plan first what i have shown here is the position of the columns so starting from c1 to c14 here you can see the position of the columns have been shown here so the first thing that we would do is we will draw the center line horizontally from each of the columns and start writing the horizon sorry the 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 vertical distances between each column this is the center to center distance of each column Similarly, next what we will do is we will draw the vertical lines passing through each column and then we will write the vertical distances between each and every column, right? So here what we have in this grid is the position of each and every column as well as the center to center distance of each column both in the vertical as well as in the horizontal direction. Now each column has to be provided with a footing. Now all the columns here are far apart from each other so I think um, uh, sloped footing that is individual slope isolated slope footing 
would be fair enough to be provided here. So if you can see here the C1 we have to provide a isolated footing here uh, isolated slope footing now in order to know the dimensions of this again I would like to tell you that I have already made a video on shallow foundations please go and see that the dimensions of this are already given there okay just to tell you the overall outside dimension is that I am taking here is 1000 mm by 1000 mm and the smaller dimension here which is that of the column is 200 mm by 200 mm again everything is given in detail in that video okay now then again c2 c3 c4 c5 all of this you have to keep on drawing the uh, footings for each and every column all right now it may so happen that two columns are very close to each other in that case if the uh, in isolated footings are getting overlapped you can provide a combined footing even the combined footing dimensions are given in the previous video that I'm referring to the link is there in the description below all right now here comes the uh, next step which is we have to name each of this foundation so here you can see f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 like that f14 you know uh, uh, the all the foundations have been named this would be easier for you to recall whenever you are referring the uh, this foundation plan again all right so next part is the diagonal check now here in this diagonal check i am taking as i told you three footings i am taking f1 f2 f4 if you see here the distance between f1 and f2 is known that is 3000 plus 1000 that is 4000 mm and the distance between f2 and f4 is also known that is 3000 mm so therefore definitely this diagonal will be root over 4000 square plus root over uh, plus uh, 3000 square which is nothing but 5000 mm so diagonal check one is 5000 mm so what will happen at site is once you have marked this and this distance you can quickly put the chain across i mean the tape across this and see whether this com comes at 5000 if this comes at 5000 that means the position of this three columns are correct similarly we can take a bigger example here i am going to take f5 f12 and f10 okay here also f5 to f12 the distance is known that is 3000 plus 2000 plus 3000 that is 8000 mm as well as the distance between f12 to f10 is also known that is 3000 plus 1000 plus 3000 that comes out to be 7000 okay so this diagonal f5 f10 would be root over 8000 square plus 7000 square which comes out to be 10630 mm this is diagonal check 2 so once you have plotted all this diagonal uh, all this uh, footings onto the side if you take the uh, the tape and measure this distance then it will give you an improved accuracy if this distance is not equal to 10630 then what you can infer is that somewhere the setting out of this this or this foundation has gone wrong so you can quickly redo this now why this step is very important is because the foundation is the first thing that is constructed on the site the first thing that is set out on this uh, site so if this goes wrong then the entire building will go wrong so these checks are extremely important to be done at the very first step so as you can see i'll do a quick recap of this so first you have to you have the positions of the columns you mark the vertical distance center to center distance between each column then you mark the horizontal center to center distance between each column then for each column you have to provide the footing it may be isolated footing it may be combined footing here for simplicity i have only shown isolated footing then you have to name each and every footing and finally you have to provide diagonal check i mean uh, based on the size of your foundation plan you can add much more foundation plan but from a student's point of view i think when you're drawing a foundation plan two diagonal checks are good enough all right that's it for today's video i hope you have understood something if you have any doubts you can write in the comments below thank you for your time